Good evening and welcome to tonight's journey through the Bible. We're in Mark chapter 6 this evening and Jesus goes from the Sea of Galilee back to his home region of Nazareth in that surrounding area and in where the people knew him even as a youth. And uh, he went into the uh, synagogue's teaching and he was healing people and the people were asking, where did he get this learning? And then, uh, and we hadn't seen such miracles like this before. And then after saying that, they said, isn't he the carpenter's son? And aren't these his brothers and the, these his sisters and just blew him off then no matter how God was using him mightily there they just disregarded him saying we know who this guy is he's no one and so although he was doing these mighty miracles they disregarded him because they felt like they knew him and Jesus said, a prophet is not without honor except in his own community. And so how sad it was, it said, because of their unbelief, he couldn't do many mighty miracles there. Sad. Sad that he couldn't do many mighty miracles there couldn't save his friends, his countrymen there in his own city because of their unbelief. Those that were near and dear to the boy Jesus before he came to do his ministry are being left behind now. And so it changed in uh, uh, changed the scenery in Mark six and went to Herod's palace and talked to John the Baptist and John the Baptist was there in prison because he had uh, said that it was not lawful for Herod to have Herodias his brother's wife as his wife unlawful all right and uh it's despicable and so although herod would call for john and he liked to hear john speak he, john was touching his heart maybe just the word of god being ministered to him through John was reaching him somewhat. But as it was, there was a festival there in uh, Herod's palace and uh, his uh, wife, Herodias, her daughter, who was not Herod's daughter, was his brother's daughter, came and danced for him and his guests. And it was very pleasing to him and his guests, her dance. And he said, ask of me what you want and I will give it to you. And then he said, even up to half of my kingdom. And she said, uh, let me think for a minute. And she went and asked her mother, Herodias. And Herodias immediately said, I want the head of John the Baptist. And so she, Herodias' daughter, went back and told Herod, I want the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And because he had said that, he was grieved. 
but not wanting to uh, fulfill what he said he would do, he quickly got the head of John the Baptist, had him killed, and his head put on a platter. It said the disciples of John came and took his body and buried his body. And Jesus was deeply grieved and wanting to go and be by himself, set out to go across the lake again and into the wilderness across the lake. He wanted to pray. And, but the people saw him leaving and the Sea of Galilee is not very big they quickly, as they saw him going, a large crowd went and followed him around the lake. When he got to the other side, here was a large crowd of people that wanted to hear him, that wanted their loved ones healed. And... His disciples were saying, it's getting late, Master. We should send them into the cities surrounding us so that they can get some food. And Jesus said, what do we have? And one of them said, we have five loaves and two fish. But what is that with such a large crowd? And Jesus said, took that and blessed it and he broke the bread and broke the fish and handed it out to the disciples and they fed 5,000 men plus women and children. 5,000 men plus women and children were fed because Jesus miraculously multiplied the five loaves and two fish into enough that it fed 5,000. And when they were done, they collected 12 large baskets full of the crumbs and remnants that were left <laughs> from the five loaves and two fish. But Jesus, he went and he wanted, as it was, to go and pray. That's why he went, just to mourn John and pray. And so after they had eaten their fill, he sent them away. He sent his disciples across the Sea of Galilee again in their boat to go to the other side. And Jesus went up on top of the mountain to pray. It said on the fourth watch, and that was probably about 3 a.m. in the morning. Here comes Jesus walking across the lake. They weren't getting anywhere. They were fighting a storm, and they weren't getting anywhere. And here comes Jesus walking across the lake. And they were very afraid and thought that it was a ghost. And Jesus said, don't be afraid, it's me. And then he came into the boat and calmed the sea. And the disciples were like, oh my. Who is this that he even has power over? The sea and the wind and the waves. And uh, of course, another gospel account tells of Peter walking out on the water and uh, didn't go very far. <laughs> but uh, he was bold enough to do that. And I'll give him that. So when Jesus got to the other side of the lake, from there uh, there were many people that were bringing their sick 
And they said, if we can only touch the hem of the, his garment, we will be healed. Just like the, the woman with the issue of blood touched the hem of his garment. And many did touch the hem of his garment and were healed and made well. And so, Jesus has huge, huge crowds following after him now. And uh, it's amazing how many people were putting their faith and trust in him. But Jesus, he knows the heart of men. And uh, just like we have a lot of people that go out and see uh, rock stars, they're not interested in anything more than to be entertained. And Jesus sensed that with the people. And we'll see more as we uh, go throughout this gospel uh, that Jesus didn't do everything to be pleasing to men, but to be pleasing to God and to shake out those in the following that weren't there for the right reason or motive. And the one gospel account said, you just came because I gave you food to eat. I gave you the loaves and the fish and you just want another free meal. <laughs> That's sad. That's sad. But why are we here? We're here because he is an amazing Lord and he is the Lord of our life. We've given our life to him because he has saved us from our sad lives. We're here because we're entertained at church. We're here because it's the right thing to do. We're here because we want to be filled with God through the Holy Spirit and want to live a life that's pleasing to Him now because we've royally messed it up on our own. And we know we need His salvation. I hope that's why you're here. I hope that's why you're here. And put your faith and trust in Him. Pray that you will have a blessed night, that you'll be blessed tomorrow in all your endeavors. Put your faith and trust in him. God bless you. Good night.